Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, I'm going to talk about OpenID Connect, which is an open authentication protocol that works on top of the OAuth version 2. Let's see how we can use it in our ASP.NET Core API and how we can validate JWT token using OIDC. Here I've created an uh, ASP.NET Core API. So when we are talking about the OpenID Connect, this is the standard. They try to expose some configuration as an open id configuration if i check this app setting here i already created an account in the auth0 it's free you can register by your email and then it will give you some subdomain like this then you can test your authentication and authorization stuff so always there is one open id configuration url Always this part of URL is the same. Well now slash open ID hyphen configuration. This is the standard. So every identity provider wants to implement the open ID flow needs to expose this URL. This URL is publicly exposed for everyone. So everyone can see this kind of configuration and there is no security concerns. So if we want to check what we have here, first one is the issuer. Every token that issued by one issuer, you can check that issuer in your token when you want to validate that token, okay? So this is the issuer that we want to use. Here is the authorization endpoint and token endpoint. This kind of URL usually used for the front-end side because front-end needs to implement the SAML SDK, usually SAML SDK. So they can use this kind of configuration for redirecting user to the login page, getting token, everything. For example, the other stuff like a scope supported, what we have here, like OpenID profile, every scope that you can set for getting token. And also for claims, that is supported by this identity provider, like audience, like email, this kind of claims that you can expect that they are in the token payload. One of the most interesting part in this URLs is this one, JWKS underline URI. Let me open this one and let's see what we have. Here is the set of keys that using for signing the token if you remember all of jwt token contains three parts first part is header second part is payload and the last one is signature how we can generate that signature using these kind of keys for signing the token they are exposing that why because you need to get them for validating the token all of the token that is generating by this provider can validate using these keys for example we have two keys for my odd zero account let's back to the code i think it's enough for talking about this open id configuration just need to remember that all of the identity providers that implement the open id flow needs to expose such a this url for you so now imagine that client front-end part they are implementing the saml sdk to redirecting user getting token and now they are sending that token to the our backend as a backend you need to validate that token as well with the same identity provider the simplest way is using open id configuration for checking the token but how here we have the open id url for getting all the configuration if we want to add our authentication middleware or service in the our ASP.NET Core web API, it's very simple. You can use the add authentication extension on the services. Before I have another video talking about the authentication, authorization, and having the authentication schemes, multiple authentication scheme, I think it's good to 
check that as well here is at jwt bearer this usually using for checking the jwt token we need to set only one property called metadata address you can see that i set the configuration getting the identity oidc value and setting to the data address what is it for behind the sense always when we are trying to add this at jwt better for every request that they have those authorized attribute they try to get metadata address for getting that open id configuration and then use those settings and information for validating the current token okay another one you can always uh, set token validation parameters here i skip the validate audience because the token that i've already generated this is the audience are different from these things just uh, i skip that one but for example in case of the issuer by default is true so always you can set this one but if we go here validate things the default value is true so we are validating the issuer or the other stuff like even lifetime validator validate lifetime all is the default value is true the interesting point i wanted to mention here is about this property clock skew i don't know if you know about it or not but let me a little talk about it imagine that you have one token that will expire in one hour, 60 minutes, okay? So you expect that after one hour, every request that contains that old token will get the 401 as an unauthorized because the token is expired, it's not valid, but it's not true in the default settings. This clock skew is saying that even when your token is expired, there is a um, time that is still valid for your token validation. By default, is set to 300 seconds for five minutes. It means that token will valid for 65 minutes, five minutes more. Then every request that contains that old token is still valid and can use your API. I think for the sake of security, it's better to set it zero always. We all set the OpenID configuration and also the token validation parameters. Now let's run the project and let's see. We have default controller and also the action for getting the weather and i've added this authorized attribute as well to check the token i have this token generated by that identity if i paste my token here we can see that this user already i got the token for it this is the user id for odd zero format and name picture anything the interesting things is the header for the algorithm and for the token type if we want to check it here again we have the key id this key id this is the the things that we need to check here if i want to yes this is the key id that already used for signing this token so it means all of the token that generated by that provider will use this set of keys and then you can validate the token by using this key. So let's call the API. API is sending request. Okay, I got 200. So in any case, if for example, I pass, let me just remove one of one letter here. And if I send the invalid token, I will get the 401. Okay, let me return it back. So done. This is the very simple one using OpenID Connect for validating token. But wait, maybe you say, I don't want to use the default behavior. Maybe you are using some legacy project that using some custom authentication, some custom middleware for checking token. Yeah, that's possible. Let's see how we can validate token from scratch using the OpenID configuration 
not using this built-in feature for the authentication. I've already added a middleware here, custom at middleware. This simple uh, middleware in the ASP.NET Core. We can uh, still validate the token even by code. Okay, let me just add this. Uh, we don't need it anymore. And let's add this middleware services at scope at middleware. And also here we need to add it to the pipeline use middleware. Done. But before running the project, let's see what we have here. First, I get the token from header. Very simple, just splitting the bearer space token. Here, I'm getting this identity OIDC. And for getting the, all of this configuration from OpenID, we have one configuration manager that accepting metadata address, exactly that property that we set in the at JWT pairer. Okay. Honestly, they are also using these codes for validating token. It's not the magic behind the scenes. Also, the .NET team, they are trying to setting up this uh, configuration manager using this metadata address and getting all of those configuration. Now we want to do it by ourselves. So here I have calling this configuration manager, creating one object, and then this is the get configuration async that will call that URL for getting OpenID configurations. And it's the same again, I've passed this validate audience and also a setting time and zero for clock skew. There is the trick here. Issuer signing keys, we need to set our OpenID configuration signing keys. This set of keys that I already mentioned, we need to tell the token validation that you need to use signing keys for validating the signature of this token. And also the issuer, valid issuer is this value. And done, that's it. Let me put one breakpoint here and then run the project again. It's running, let me call the API. Okay, so here we go. Here is the, our OpenID configuration URL. Let me call this API, okay. So now we have those configuration. If we want to check the OpenID configuration, what we have here. So for example, claim supported is 16. All of this configuration that we already checked in the browser. Let's move on. Okay, we are setting this one, nice. And here is the line for validating token. Yes, it's valid. Token passed, and also here, I just get it for showing to you, nickname, name, anything. Okay, let's move on. And it's 401. Why? I just forgot to, because for example, if you are using the custom middleware, you don't know need to use this authorized because this authorized is handling by the ASP.NET pipeline. So this one is checking by the pipeline. For this reason, it through the 401. Let's run the project again. Now I can call the API again. Okay, breakpoint. Let me just uh, continue and uh, see what we have. 200. Because we already checked the token, by our custom middleware, not by ASP.NET pipeline. So for any reason, if this validation token contains some invalid token or expired token, invalid signature, it will through exception. And then here I will set the 401. For example, if I pass some invalid token here and then call the API, I expect that it should through the 401 as a unauthorized. That's it. We checked how we can use the OpenID configuration in the ASP.NET API. Also, how we can use it in the code in the real world because this code is using at JWT bearer extension as well for getting the OpenID using this 
metadata address and uh, it's very simple and straightforward honestly every identity provider that support this open id configuration as a backend developer i am happy with that because it's really easy for checking token anything no need to store the keys in some secret uh, store or any other you know previous stuff that we were doing for validating token that's it for now Thank you for your time. Bye.